Hello, Boko. Afternoon, Edward. One lovely afternoon, Boko was very excited. He was looking forward to pulling one of his favorite trains known as the Night Goods. He always appreciated a nice long run to the other railway under the stars. He left his trucks in the yard at Wellsworth Station, where Henry took them on to Ellsbridge not long after. Hello there. Safe travels. I'll keep the twins in order. Don't be gone too long. Don't fret. I'll be back before noon tomorrow. The guard then blew his whistle. It was now time to leave. With a honk of his horn, Boko left the yard and headed down the main line. taking the night goods. The evening air was crisp and it was nice running with few engines around. Hmm, it seems so quiet. Ah yes, how could I have forgotten? Best of all, the trucks were too busy sleeping to cause any mischief. Hi, how are you? After a peaceful run, Boko arrived at the large station the train was scheduled to stop at. He 
left his trucks in one of the sidings for another engine to collect them in the morning as usual. After he was uncoupled from the load, he began making his way to the sheds. However, tonight's fog was so thick that he had completely lost his bearings. That's strange. I'm certain the sheds were around here. Save for the rumbling of his engine, Boko found the yard to be more quiet than he was expecting. After what felt like ages, he managed to spot the outline of a building ahead where the rails led to. Oh, finally. I thought we would never find... His relief was rather... short-lived. As he drew closer, he noticed that the nearby structure before them wasn't the big shed where the mainline diesel slept. It seemed to be smaller. The diesel found it to be shabby, and it also looked as if it had been vacant for a long time. Well, it seems alright. A shed's a shed, old fellow. Besides, we'll go mad trying to find our way through this fog any longer. Indeed. This isn't the best, but it's either this or staying in the fog. It's only for one night, anyway. Boko was uneasy. Something felt odd. But he didn't want to navigate through the fog any further. His driver backed him into the dingy accommodation. I'll follow our rails back to the station, then get a hotel room for the night. I'll be back by 7.30 tomorrow morning. That sounds alright. Good night, Harry. Night, Boko. Now, Boko was alone. He stared out into the darkness. All was silent. No trucks were being pushed around. Not even the distant sound of diesel horns was audible. It was as if the fog muffled the world around him. Why, hello oh, there. Oh. It's not too often that I have visitors. Uh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. My driver and I got lost in the fog, and this was the only shed we could find. Oh, there's no need to apologize. Fog can lead you to places where you don't expect to be. Besides, rather than remaining isolated, it's nice to have some company for a change. Well, thank you. And I must admit, I am surprised. I've been taking the night goods for years now, but I've never seen this shed before. Or you, for that matter. You're not the only one. It seems I'm invisible to most who work here. Hmm, you're a Sodor engine, aren't you? Oh, how did you know? You're different from the diesels that live around these parts. Much more courteous for a start. You know, I was a Sodor engine too, many, many moons ago. Boko was quite surprised. 
he hadn't expected to run on the same rails this stranger once did. Yes, it's true. Used to work on the main line, bringing trucks and coaches to the big station. Such a lovely place it was. Only wish I had appreciated it more at the time. Why don't you return? I'm sure the Fat Controller would welcome you back with open arms. Oh, no. He didn't have the patience for an engine like me. Nonsense. He most certainly wouldn't want to see you in a state like this. Tell you what, come back with me tomorrow. Tell me, is an engine by the name of Edgewood still around? Oh, yes. I, as well as a few other engines, work with him on the Brendam Ranch line. Ah, oh, I'm glad to hear it. A kind soul he was. I only wish I'd been as kind to him. Oh, well, may I ask your name? Oh, it's getting rather late. We'd better get some sleep now. We'll finish our chat in the morning. Boko was curious as to why the engine wouldn't answer his question, but had to admit he was feeling drowsy. And it wasn't long until he was fast asleep. Where am I? I can't remember the last time I saw an engine in operation. This place isn't the best for you. You best be off. It is better that you leave this desolate place. You? What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm through. All engines must eventually meet their fates. I hope I didn't keep you up. I had an awful... Wait. What? B but where's the shed? And the engine? Wait. What happened to the shed? I don't know what to say. I know for a fact that you parked me in a place to sleep. And the fog couldn't have been that thick to where we couldn't tell what was surrounding us. Sheds don't just randomly disappear. I'm just surprised as you are. Good thing it's not winter. Otherwise, that would have done a number on your engine. We should start heading back to Sodor. <sighs> Sounds like a plan. And so, 
unable to comprehend the inexplicable occurrences, Boko rolled out of the yard for his long journey home. Hello, Boko. How was your night on the mainland? Have I got a story to tell you? So, I had to leave my train on a siding, stay at the shed with the other diesels, and come back in the morning. At least, that was the usual plan. It was foggy when I arrived, and naturally it was hard to see. After what felt like ages, we approached a small shed that had seen better days. We didn't want to go through the fog any further, so I slept there for the night. However, I wasn't the only engine there. There was an old tender engine. He was kind, and we chatted for a while. He told me he used to work on Sodor, and something about Edward. However, he wouldn't give me his name. We both fell asleep after some time. Then I woke up this morning to find the strangest thing. The old engine and the shed had disappeared into thin air. My driver was confused too. I really don't know how to explain it. At first, both engines were silent but not for long. We've also had some instances not too different from what you're telling me. On the mainland, there have recently been sightings of engines starting off with nobody in their cab, or the sound of a hard biff with no coaches or trucks being pushed around. We began to realize that something was up when one of the diesels woke up to find himself in a scrapyard. He was then sent back when the manager found out he wasn't meant to be there. Oh. Well, it's time for me to leave. I'll see you around, Boko. Later. Boko had much on his mind. He didn't know what to think of the old engine, the disappearing shed, his unpleasant dream, or what Bear had just told him. However, he did know that he would be having a very long talk with Edward. <laughs> 